Good morning, class. Today we're going to be working on natural dyes. Now that's D-Y-E-S as in change its color, not D-I-E-S as in it's gone from being alive to being dead. Just going to point that out. The natural dyes are things that people used to get color in their cloth a long time ago. So back before 1863, 1863 was just about the time of the U.S. Civil War. Anytime people wanted a color in the cloth that they wore, they needed to do a natural dye technique to get the color. In 1863, the very first chemical dye came about in a laboratory. And since then, we have been using all of these artificial colors to make our clothes. And they're bright, and they're beautiful, and they're wonderful. Okay, that's fine. But some of us still like the natural dyes, the way it was done way back when. So in the pioneering days, when someone wanted cloth that wasn't white, then they needed to do a couple of things. Either they could find themselves a black sheep, or a brown sheep, or a gray llama, and take that fiber and spin it and make it into cloth, and then they would have cloth that wasn't white. Or they could do some fancy finagling to get color out of their natural environment. And that meant either if you were lucky enough to live around cactuses, if you could come across the cochineal beetle, or if you were lucky enough to live close to the water, this, the, the salt water, you could maybe find some sea snails that would give you a purple ink, or you went for plants. Plants can give you a whole lot of different colors. And it's not necessarily always the color that they are showing your eye is what they're going to give you in a dye pot. But we're going to be do it working today with some flowers and some greens that I've asked you to go out and gather. So let's take a look inside your unit bag. You will find only a little piece of white cloth in your unit bag. And you will say, well, Ms. Marilyn, that's not very exciting at all. But this cloth is special because I got it at Pacific Fabrics and Crafts years ago. They called it cotton to die for, D-Y-E, not D-I-E. And it is cotton that has been treated with a mordant. Now a mordant is a chemical that will allow the natural dyes to stick to the cloth better and stick around and not just fade away with the sunlight or the first time you wash it. And mordanted cloth, is something that they've made available in a white cotton and it's just sitting there waiting for some dyes to happen. The nice thing about mordants are that you can mordant it and years later it'll still be mordanted. So this cloth is just waiting for your flowers. I'm going to get myself a, uh, a cutting board or a piece of plastic or something that's going to protect my table or my mom's table from any dyes coming their way. And I'm going to just tape this down so that it doesn't move on me. And I want to not cover a lot of the cloth because I want a lot of the cloth to be covered in pretty, pretty colors. So I'm going to catch just the edge of it. Actually, why don't I do these sides as well? Just for safety sake. This is blue tape. It's sticky, but you can remove it. Sticky, but you can remove it is a, is a fancy type of tape. And just catching the edge. This doesn't need to look beautiful. This just needs to make sure that my cotton is going to stay right there. Let's talk about flowers for a second. I went out in my yard and I found lots of cool flowers. Now you will have different flowers because I'm taping this at the beginning of April and we're doing it in the middle of May in class. So the flowers that you have available in your yard will be very different than the ones that I have. But I have lots of different things here. And not only do I have uh, flowers and uh, weeds because, you know, why not use them? I also have things from my garden like chives. Chives are a good one. And 
I have some arugula in here too. Where's my arugula? I'll find it when I tip it out. So you can find things that are colorful. There's a happy pile, hey? So the colors that I, I bought, I got a lot of different ones here so that we could talk about it. I am looking for flowers that are very colorful and not necessarily flowers that are just white because white won't give me a lot of color maybe, I'm thinking. I mean, we could do an experiment on it, but in the end, I want this to be very colorful, so I probably will not choose to do the white petals. I will definitely go for that orange, though. So for this, I think what I want to do is have like flowers here and then kind of leafy looking things elsewhere. I am going to start composing a picture in plants. If I put a little bit of these nice chives here at the very beginning, then they will go on to the cloth and then color will be behind them. You know, it's really cool. So here's a nice primrose. Primrose gives really good color, but like I say, you might not have access to the primrose. If I were to put this down like this, it would work, but there's a whole lot of botanical bulk here that I don't necessarily want giving color to my cloth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna just pinch that off and then that bulk can go elsewhere, and just the colorful bits can stay. And same with this one. Gather up the petals, and I can just pinch that away. And lay that there. This is a forsythia. This gives nice yellow. I am also going to pinch away its large bits. And I could lay it like this. I could lay it like this. I may take a few and lay them every which way. Now this one I'll have to do like that. And I'll have one right next to it so it looks like it's like coming off in profile. This is a pansy. Take off its bit. If it falls into two pieces, don't worry about it. That just gets placed into the picture. In fact, I could take this and put it off somewhere else if I wanted. It doesn't need to stay in the shape that it went on in. These are some forget-me-nots. You probably have these growing in your yard as a weed. Okay, let's look for some greens here. There's an interesting shape of a leaf. I'm looking for interesting shapes while doing this craft because it's, it's the shape that's going to transfer, I hope. Let's do that. And I'm kind of trying to make kind of like a, a little picture here. What else have I got up here? I've got some of these. These are flowering currants, and they have quite a bit of botanical stuff around the center of them, so I'm just pinching off the pretty little flowery bits, the petals and such. These are tiny little flowers. If ever you take some time and look at flowers, you'll notice that they all have basically the same parts. You'll study that when you get into the older classes, the different parts of a flower. Some of, them have, some of them are purple, and some of them are pink, and some of them are yellow, but they all basically have the same parts and do the same thing. There is a daffodil, one of those tiny, tiny daffodils, micro daffodil. We'll stick him down here. Here is a, a sample of something I wouldn't use because, you know, that's only going to give me white juice, not colorful juice like this one. Oh, these smell good. Ooh. So these little guys I can just kind of place everywhere. I'd, I'd like to, I mean, this is just a, a style thing, but I would like to have lots of 
color and not so much white space. If you like white space, that's up to you. I also had in here, I thought, some tender leaves of um, pine, new pine needles. Not the old pine needles, ones that are kind of hard and waxy. Not those, but the nice new ones, they give good color. So here, this is a weed. I call them fling weeds. They get in my garden and they take their seeds and put them everywhere. So I, this is a good idea to pull him out and use him for something pretty instead. <laughs> oh, what else can we do here? Let's see. There's another primrose. You lay down there and the others will lay around you. This is getting pretty full, Ms. Marilyn. Look at that. There's some purple. And, you know, I, you can take, like, um, I have a rose bush that has, uh, the leaves are kind of reddish in the early spring, and those will transfer color. And the, um, I like the orange. We'll put him right there. And the, uh, like, the red maples that we have in the Pacific Northwest when they're tiny and young and bright red, those make really good transfers. Okay, this guy, I wanted to use him. We'll take away the thick bits and the stem, and I don't have any space for him. Oh no, we'll make space for him. And then just add these leaves back in here. You can double up a little bit, but I wouldn't do like this because that's not going to allow the green to show and shine. Okay, so pretty much that is my, my project composed. I'm going to put one more down here. And now what I want to do is totally cover it with blue tape. Now, while putting this on, I have to be careful that it comes straight down and doesn't shift anything on the way down, and I want to overlap it a little bit to the outside so that it's completely con contained inside the sticky. Which means I will also be covering up some of the blue tape that's sticking the cotton down to the background there. You might have blue tape that isn't quite as thick as mine. That's okay. Just you'll need more stripes of it. And I want to overlap a little bit the blue tape from on itself. And mask this entire thing. Straight down. I still know where I need to do the work, though, because I can still see the, the light blue and I know the size of my piece of cloth. With a little bit of overlap so that there's no gaps where juice can get out. Now, this is a direct transfer type of dyeing from the flower right to the cloth. When you get into the older, older class with me, we will be doing natural dyes the way that most people use natural dyes, which is you take the plant stuff, you put it in hot water, you boil it a little bit, you get all of the dye, all of the color out of the flower and into the water, and then you put the yarn into the dye pot. This is a little bit more direct. What we're going to use instead of water and heat and that sort of thing is we're going to Go find the biggest spoon in your family's kitchen. It wants to have a big bowl and it wants to be a very curvy bowl because this is what we're going to do. We're now going to crush the plant stuff underneath of the blue tape. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand in the bowl and I'm moving the handle of the spoon around in order to get out all the good colorful juices and go right on to the cloth. Now the reason this works is because this cloth is already mordanted and it's going to grab those colors and hold on to them better than, you know, like a, a piece of muslin that you would just buy from a store. 
So this is, I'm not doing any pressing it like this. I don't want anything to shift underneath. I'm pressing down and I'm moving the handle. And you know, it'll be even better if we stand up. So the advantage of standing is that I can straighten my, sh my elbow and push from the shoulder and press down and then move the spoon around like that. You know, when you're in the second and third grade, you don't weigh as much as Ms. Marilyn does. <laughs> and so this will be better for you to, to crush the flowers by putting your whole, the weight of your whole shoulder into it like this. And remember, I'm not moving it this way. I'm just walking around. Just like this. If one arm gets tired, you can take it to the other arm. And now this is going to take a while because you want to make sure that you cover every part of the cloth with this part of the spoon. Not with this part of the spoon because you're, you're pressing only on just that one spot, right? And so it's, it's a small amount of space. And so to get everything crushed, it's going to take some time. So be patient. And y'all don't need to watch me doing this. This will take longer probably than you want to stand and watch. So we'll be back together in just a bit. OK, I finally am all done with the work of this. So let's take a look at what we've got. Now, when I take off the blue tape, the plants will hopefully come with the tape. That's the advantage of using the sticky tape to do it this way, because it just removes all of the botany from your cloth, and your cloth is there just by itself and beautiful. If I open it up and I see that there's a spot that I haven't covered carefully, I can still go back and do it at this point because it's not yet shifted. So, oh, there's color. Looking good. I'm trying to remove all of the blue tape in one piece so that I can put it back on if I need to. Oh, that's pretty good. That even looks like a flower. Look at that. I got the red and I got the yellow in the center. And there are the pieces of chive that I put on there. Oh, I am liking this. Look at all that color. Look at all that color. And I don't need to use any artificial chemicals to get this to happen. And look at that color. I especially like this orange from the Daffodil Center and all the pinks and the purples. And this, ah, this here is from, is from the flowering uh, current is this color here. It's a dark purple like that. And I would say that that is covered everywhere I wanted to. There's no spot that looks like I failed to hit it with a spoon. So if there had been a space that, oh, look here, I missed a spot, I could put that back on just like this, and I could work that spot, and then I could take it off again, and it's all still good. So let's get this off of my cutting board. Okay. Now the last thing that I would like to do with this, because I want my mom and my dad to remember what year this was done and who did it. And so I will put my initials on it and the date. But I'm waiting until the end to do it because I wanted to see, you know, where is some white space. And I see white space right down here. So why don't I put my initials here? and the date. And when that dries, it should be, because it's mordanted cloth, it should hold on to that color pretty well. And once it dries, I can flick off this little bit of botany that's still trying to hold on. And that will be then my project. I can't wait to see yours.